Um, so hi, um, I'm Michael Kodahi, as it says from. Uh, so I'm Michael from. Can you hear me? Right. So I'm Michael from Microsoft. Um, this is a really loose session, largely because I don't know shit anymore about much. Uh, what I do know is what Microsoft does to help people get things done. Uh, so it's not super techy. Uh, so if you're coming to get some uh, tech support stuff going on, uh, that's not me. Uh, what I do do at Microsoft is, um, is I help devs succeed in Windows stores. That's it. So I care about people who have uh, stuff for Windows Phone and Windows 8. Um, uh, tablets and laptops, that store, stuff that's in it, I want them to be successful. So what today's really about is, is understanding what that means and the stuff that we have that can help you uh, be successful in it. Yeah? Um, so, the, I think as I was thinking about putting this together, like I get asked the same questions over and over again of stuff that I just think everyone knows because obviously Microsoft does it so everyone should know it. Uh, so there's shitloads of stuff that I just keep learning that people don't know exists. Um, that I reckon everyone should know exists, and hopefully by the end of this, you guys will know exists. Um, so it's, it's, this is basically a sexy term. This is basically a list of um, of things that I think are cool and important if you're going to build stuff for the Windows Store uh, that you probably should know. Um, so a bit of an update on on the store itself and how Windows is going. Uh, having started with no users and no devices and no nothing, uh, where we're at right now. Uh, so 500,000 apps. Uh, is pretty good. I actually don't think that number really matters that much. The more apps does not make the merrier. Uh, we care about quality. Uh, but there are 500k apps uh, and we're growing at a pretty good rate. So apps just keep coming on board and we're happy with that. Uh, user base is probably one of the more interesting ones. Um, and there's a whole bunch of stuff. I Actually, if I'm not on mic, I can share. Um, that uh, active user number keeps growing crazy, um, which is kind of awesome. And uh, what surprised me actually about active users, active users is people who touch the store once a month. Um, what surprised me about active users is like you walk around Sydney and you don't see a lot of Windows phones, for example. Or you, where are we, Melbourne? You walk around Melbourne, you don't see a lot of Windows phones, you see some. Uh, what surprised me about, and that's a pretty reasonable number, where are those people? And are you targeting those people is an interesting one, and we'll get into that. Um, devs. Pretty much, we do a lot of work around making the dev experience really free and really cheap and really easy. Um, so 640,000 registered devs, uh, which is much more than it was uh, a year ago. Um, and one of the cool things that we do around, we're not, we'll never share numbers of like how many things are being sold and how much money is being made. Uh, but one of the really interesting things that we do that's kind of cool is mobile operator billing. So if you have a Windows phone uh, you and you're on Telstra, for example, and you want to buy something, you don't have to give us your credit card. You could basically just use your Telstra uh, billing. Uh, we're at, I think it's closer to 100 now, uh, carriers around the world that do that frictionless, you know, no need for a credit card online uh, to, uh, uh, to buy. Um, so that's kind of like a, a snapshot of where the store is at. You know the stores have converged as well? So we used to have a Windows phone store and we used to have a Windows 8 store and they were very different dev stacks and then the kind of the dev stack moved closer together and now we're at the point where there's literally one dashboard that you use for both stores. So it's kind of more universal than it was. Uh, it was a pretty crappy start by having two separate basically two separate architectures to the way you code all the way up to the way you deploy to the stores. Uh, now we're at a place of, of, of happiness where literally it's one store uh, for both uh, devices. Um, so the first thing if you don't know about it is this guy. Uh, if you're not going to uh, uh, building apps, the blog, uh, you should, especially if you have uh, uh, Windows, um, especially if you're on Windows uh, and you've got apps installed, this is the place you go to learn shit that, is, that we're prepared to share publicly. If ever there's a press release or anything interesting around how the store is going and what devs are doing with interesting stuff and how they succeeded, uh, you need to go and subscribe to that blog. 90% uh, of what I'm about to do today was pilfered from that blog. Um, and it's actually really helpful, especially in understanding where you should be targeting if you're building apps. Um, it's a really interesting place. So like, some obvious things there, like games are big, no matter whether you're on phone or on, on, on um, on, on Windows Big, uh, but if you're on Windows Big or Windows 8, uh, obviously games are bigger there, uh, whereas phones, social starts to index up a little bit more. Um, so a couple of things you'll learn there. This is probably one of the most interesting things if you haven't thought about it when it comes to the Windows world, uh, is this guy. Uh, so this is actually from the blog as well, um, and it's how diverse the Windows platform is, and most devs um, don't think about it. Most, most devs go, I live in, Norway, or I live in Finland, or the same thing? No. 
I live in Australia, I'm going to make an English app, I live in the UK, I'm going to make an English app. Um, Windows is actually much bigger around the world than you think it is. Um, one of my favourite stories ever is I was actually in, um, in Vietnam, probably six months ago, uh, and I, I decided I don't want to stay in the city, I'll just hop on a boat and go just somewhere random and just get off a, a normal transit boat. I hop on this boat, I sit down and I'm surrounded by like kids going to school or something, and I take out my Lumia 1020, to take a photo of the thing, the little kid looks at me, he goes, Lumia? I'm like, am I being pranked? I'm like, yes. <laughs> and he's like, 1020, right? I'm like, yes. Calls all his friends over, 1020, 1020, and they're all like hovering around my phone. I'm like, there's something going on here. I don't know what it is, but there's something going on here. Um, and all these kids were like blown away by my 1020. One of them took me like home and to, sh to show me to his parents. <laughs> and it was the best day probably of my life. Actually, just this kid, they were learning English and they saw me and they were like, I was teaching them English and this 20 minute boat ride turned into a two hour boat ride. Um, and then I emailed the Microsoft Vietnam office going, um, I know you don't know me, but did you guys put these kids up to this? And it turns out no, Lumia is huge in Vietnam. Uh, you walk around most of the, uh, like Ho Chi Minh City and stuff, you see Lumia everywhere. Because uh, if you're in a country where you don't have money, you're not buying iPhones, for example, uh, you're buying low-end Androids or brands that you recognize for phone, Nokia is huge in a lot of Asia. So it kind of opened my mind to the idea of like, I live in a bubble. If you live in Sydney, you live in an Apple bubble. If you live in Melbourne, you're living in a mixture bubble. Uh, if you live around the world, it turns out actually Chinese, Mandarin is huge on Windows Phone, French, uh, Portuguese, Brazilians have massive Windows Phone adoption. And we look at the apps that are doing super well, the games that are doing super well on Windows, they're the games that are localized. So 75% of Windows Phone downloads actually come from places other than in English. So I'm actually personally doing a lot of work at the moment in understanding how I can help Aussie devs uh, internationalize, so like get Portuguese into their games, for example, and then actually working with my counterparts in Brazil to get the Brazilian stores to feature them. Yeah. Um, so if you're not thinking about internationalization, then you really need to. Especially, you should be doing it across every every uh, OS. Uh, but if you're not doing it in Windows, then you're letting yourself down, I reckon. And I've seen, the apps I've seen do massive download numbers, actually do a lot of work around um, localization. Yo. Surprisingly, yes. So I can't share with you. Uh, so we, we measure um, spend per active user in different countries. Um, and what surprised me about actually Vietnam and Brazil is they're, they're almost on par with the US. So the US has lots more devices. Actually, no. Uh, US has a lot of devices, but you'd be surprised that it spend per device uh, in countries like that. All up. So this is. Um, uh, in-app purchase, and this is actually ad revenue as well, uh, is actually, because you want to do free-to-play if, uh, if you're in emerging markets, um, actually uh, very close to the US, very close to the US. So they do spend, which surprised me, right? I'm thinking Brazil, they're probably not going to go spend shit loads on stuff, but they'll play your game for ages, and they'll get exposed to your ads for ages. Yeah? Um, there's more to come on that. I'm, doing, I'm putting together a bit of a report around uh, what we do and what the opportunity really is. Um, and part of what I'm going to do in the next six months is actually um, work out how I can help local devs you know, do language translation and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's stuff from, the, uh, from that blog. And you should keep an eye on that blog because it's really, really worth looking at. The other thing that's interesting is, um, is compared to other OSs, uh, we do a very high, uh, obviously paid apps, there are more, the more money comes through, um, through in-app purchase than paid for most apps, most games especially, because that's just where the market uh, thank you, Apple has gone. Well, actually, thank you, Android, more than Apple. Um, but Windows actually index is better than both of those guys in terms of um, people who still pay for, for premium title. Um, and the reason for that is we do a thing called try mode. Um, we all have Windows things. Do we know what try mode is? Let me show you quickly what try mode is. So um, if you're in the store, which looks like that, um, so you go to iOS and basically things cost what they cost. And or all they're free and they have in app. Uh, we we do a thing called um, um, you can uh, let's go home. So you can implement one flag in your um, this is very internet dependent. So bear with me. Okay, you can implement one flag in your um, in your game or any title where you could determine whether they're in trial mode or uh, full mode. Similar to Xbox Live Arcade was uh, very similar to that, right? So you could actually go. I want this game to go in store for free. Uh, but I want them to know this is a trial. 
It's not a light, it's not weird, it's not funky, it's a total trial. It'll, however you want to operate under what the trial means, is it time bomb, is it only like limited amount of gems or whatever it is. Um, and then uh, you can have a, 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 an in-app unlock to turn it to full mode. Yeah? What it does is it puts the user in the mindset that they're trying the game. They're not buying a dodgy version of the game. They're not buying a cut-down version that's going to try to milk you for more gems and things. What they're buying is a, what they're downloading is a trial to see if they like it. And they're very prepared at that point to go, I like this, I'm now going to buy it. Because they know what the cost is up front um, and, and what it's going to cost when they decide to keep it, right? Um, there's a nice balance between, you have to think about when you're doing that in your game, are you going to time bomb it after 10 seconds and go, there, there's your trial? Or are you going to let them play for ages but then unlock uh, more, um, more levels? But thinking about what that means is, is probably the more difficult uh, challenge from a game design point of view. Uh, but we do really well because we have trial mode. Um, and it means that people buy, spend more money on premium per user than actually most other uh, mobile OS. Um, and it's because of, of Trimode. So um, that's kind of a rough number on, on how uh, revenue exists on the Windows Store. Um, so in-app purchase, which is basically uh, download to own trial, uh, uh, and other types of in-app purchases, uh, is, is pretty big, particularly on phone. Uh, but you, you can see the numbers there. Uh, and if you compare that, not many other vendors share this kind of data. Um, it turns out Windows is actually a pretty awesome place to be if you want to do uh, in-app upgrade of things. Um, and particularly in the games world, it's hugely popular. It's hugely popular for games to do a, a, an in-app. 82% of them, as you can see, I don't have to repeat myself. All right, so uh, the other thing that you probably should know if you didn't know is if you want to export to, uh, from Unity, because they happen to be at Unite, uh, it's free. So the export, uh, if you're going to do iOS, Android, you're paying for that. Uh, you're paying a, a subscription to be able to export to, to those guys. We actually um, subsidize it, so you guys don't pay. So you have Unity Pro. And in fact, I thought, you, am I right, Paul? Unity Free also does export? Mm, not sure. It does. Pro. It does, right? Yeah. yeah. I've got the free version of Unity, and I'm exporting that problem. So the official words are actually Unity Pro has free export, but I'm doing it with, with Unity Free as well. Uh, but it means you don't pay to be able to export uh, to Windows. Um, I mean, we're aware that we're not first in the mobile world. We're aware that we're not second in the mobile world. So we're working hard to make sure it's super easy and super cheap to be able to get onto our uh, platforms, yeah? Uh, so that's probably the biggest tip. If you didn't know, it costs you nothing to export from uh, Unity to, uh, to Windows. Um, uh, okay, the other thing, if you didn't know, I'm surprised the amount of people who think Visual Studio costs money. It does. Uh, but um, <laughs> but um, it's surprising the amount of people I've lately have gone, there's a free version, and absolutely there's a free version. So if you're, if you're a big dev shop and you're doing a whole bunch of application lifestyle management stuff, then you want to pay for Visual Studio. If you're a couple of people in the studio trying to make things work and you don't want to pay shitloads of money, uh, we do a free version of Visual Studio called Visual Studio Express uh, that will allow you to take your export from, um, from Unity and publish that to the store, because you do all that stuff, similar to Xcode and stuff, you do, you do all that stuff in Visual Studio, and that's where you will add things uh, like live tiles, um, like the share charms and a whole bunch of extra stuff. Uh, you can do that in Visual Studio, but it's pretty much free. It's a little bit limited, but for the purposes of getting going, uh, it's actually uh, a pretty good free uh, tool. Um, so, there's that. Uh, BizSpark is another one that I'm surprised people don't know about. Uh, so, BizSpark is our like heaps of free shit for entrepreneurs, basically is what this, this part is. So if you're a, pretty much every studio in Australia outside of you know, three uh, are entrepreneurs who are making it work. Um, so we have a thing called Bispark, which is across every kind of uh, uh, startup. Uh, but what Bispark is, it's a program, you literally go to the website and you, you register for it. Uh, there's a couple of additions around it. So it's actually pretty big worldwide. There are 100,000, it's actually about 120,000 startups at the moment on it. Um, and you get a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, so you get Windows 8 licenses, you get um, uh, Azure hours, you get all of our server tools, you get uh, a whole bunch of client tools. Um, you have to meet a couple of requirements, uh, and they are the requirements, basically. You've got to be a company less than three years old, um, and you've got to be doing less than a million bucks in revenue. If you're doing more than a million bucks in revenue, go buy our shit, your tight ass. 
Uh, and if not, then that's basically the criteria. Uh, we, we got heaps of people coming through Bispark because it basically costs you nothing to be on Bispark. Um, and to be on Bispark, so say you want you, you know, Windows licenses, uh, pro versions of Visual Studio, um, uh, Azure hours so you can put stuff up in our cloud, you can get all that for Nix uh, if you meet that criteria. Yeah, if you're under three years old and you're making less than a million bucks. So you go there to sign up. Um, the person who approves, it, it is a process where we approve you. Uh, the person who approves it sits next to me. And um, so if you want to get through it really quick, then email me once you do it, and I'll have a chat with her and go, hey, you know, these guys are worth it. We have a bar. It's not like I'm just a random person who thinks they might be doing stuff. Uh, you qualify and say what you're doing. And if, it's, if, if it looks like it's something that's going to be half decent, then we'll give up our tools. What's in it for Microsoft? Bluntly, after three years, if you've done really well, uh, you get to stay on the Microsoft stack and start paying for stuff. Yeah? Um, so uh, you don't pay for the stuff that you've got on your subscription. So if you get your Windows 10 license, uh, then you're all good. But three years goes by and Windows 11, 12, or 13, or whatever comes out, uh, then that's not part of your subscription from then on in. So we don't just yank all the tools from you. What we do is actually go, um, your tools are done, they're locked at three years. Anything from then on is a, is a paid for transaction, right? But you basically get free, free access to all of our tools for three years. Um, so that's kind of what you get. I think I've said that all. Uh, we do a whole bunch of, um, uh, so 150 Azure hours is what you get, if, uh, specifically around Azure. Um, the other really interesting thing around it, as I hang out with the Bispark guys more, this is a really good Bispark community. Uh, so a whole bunch of entrepreneurs who are on, uh, what surprised me at this part actually is the amount of iOS devs on it because they want to use Azure as their, uh, for their cloud stuff um, and it's free, so they, they're on it. And um, there's a whole bunch of community stuff that we do. We do meetups once a month, uh, both in Sydney, Melbourne, and then we alternate Brisbane uh, and even a couple of Western Australian ones. Even a couple of Western Australian ones. Um, so there's a whole really good community of, of entrepreneurs and getting tips from them and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but we also do uh, technical support as well. So if you've got something that's good, but you've got uh, roadblocks, uh, Bispark is a place, uh, we kind of tier you and profile you within Bispark and go, these guys are awesome, these guys are kicking tires, these guys are on the verge of multi-million. And when you go, hey, my thing's broken, um, then we can, we can do support and actually get real smart technical people to come and help you, uh, depending on where you fall within that, yeah? Um, so, and on Bispark you get free store account, which, I don't know how much, do you know how much it costs to be in the store? To have a store developer account? Zero. Well, actually, it's $19, but if you're not smart enough to figure out how to get it for free, I don't know, like from here, uh, then, then you probably should lose your 19 bucks. Um, so, uh, you get a store account, you get, um, uh, and a whole bunch of marketing stuff. So we have like a Bispark ecosystem of like Facebook ads that we buy and marketing things and case studies and all that kind of stuff. So you get access to, uh, to that kind of uh, network. So if you're not on Bispark, it costs you nothing and it's totally worth uh, doing it if you're, um, if you're, if you're uh, a startup. Okay, so I don't know if you know how much, how much you know about the best set of benefits. This is one that's probably about um, three weeks old uh, that almost nobody knows about. Uh, which is a shame, or oh, it's three weeks old, so it's kind of new. If you went to that blog that I said earlier, the building the apps window, you would know this already. Um, Dev Center benefits, so Dev Center is our, actually what is Apple's and Android's thing when you log in as a developer, the portal uh, thing. Dev Center is our developer portal, it's where you go to get paid, it's where you go to see where your downloads are, it's where you go to do all that stuff to submit apps. Um, we've just added a little bit to the Dev Center, uh, and it's, it's the benefits side, so we've gone, how do we help devs be more successful, how do we motivate good devs? Uh, Dev Center Benefits is where we go. Uh, you sign up with Dev Center Benefits. Uh, it's free. So what the first thing you get with your Dev Center Benefits is a free store account. So if you're paying nineteen dollars for a store account, there's something broken. Uh, so uh, there's there's three levels of it. Uh, you can obviously see what's going on there. Um, the first level everyone gets. So if you're just a random off the street saying I want to be in the Dev Center, then you will get a free store account, app architecture consulting. It's a service you email them and say, am I doing the right thing here? They send you a PDF saying yes or no, follow the PDF. Um, so don't get too excited about that. And same as the design consulting bit. Uh, the other cool thing that you get, I think, is you get $25 store credit. So you can actually go and, um, and try games and try apps and, and be a, you know, a store person. Um, if you, when you go to your dev center, when you log in, you, you're an explorer. You can then say, I want to be an expert. I want to be the next level up. 
you get asked a bunch of questions, and human beings are involved at this point. Human beings review your, your titles. Um, and if you qualify for expert, um, and it's generally based around quality of app that makes you an expert, it's not around if you have a vision in downloads, it's not around that kind of stuff. If someone looks at it and goes, this is actually pretty good, let's help these guys out. Um, you get a million ad uh, impressions, and I don't know if you know what ad duplex is. So ad duplex is ad exchange. You put an ad in your game, uh, and it advertises other games, and it's a, you get credits, and the more credits you get, the more you show up elsewhere. Uh, and duplex are actually proven to be really, really popular. There's a title made by a guy by the name of Steve Yap in somewhere not in a city. I else forget. Well, Newcastle. Uh, just a dude who was a SQL Server database guy. He built a thing called Castlemine. Castlemine's a top-down tower defense game. Uh, stuck add duplex on the bottom of it. Um, he also released it concurrently on iOS as well. Uh, and his download numbers are phenomenal. Uh, and what he's done is switch, and his download numbers are phenomenal because he started getting credits, and then he showed up on other games, and he's, I won't tell, I can't tell you exactly how much he's downloaded. They're pretty impressive downloads. Um, and now what he's done is gone, I've got all this massive ad duplex credit. I don't need it so much because I've got an audience. So he's now switched in for ad center ads. So now he's got proper paid ads um, that don't exchange for credits. Um, and when they deplete, when the inventory is uh, not high enough, he just switches back to ad duplex and just gets ad duplex credit. So he's got this virtual cycle. And his numbers are growing uh, phenomenal. And we haven't really featured him a lot. Uh, we, we do now because we love him and he's awesome. But we haven't featured him a lot. But Adduplex was what made him super successful. He's not been able to replicate that on other uh, platforms. Adduplex is a very healthy ecosystem, actually. Um, so Adduplex.com, I think, goes. Anyway, you get a million impressions with Adduplex. Uh, you get you get Bispark. Uh, so you, what that really means is you get like um, you get accelerated acceptance of the Bispark. Uh, but I'm here, so you have accelerated acceptance to this part. Um, and AE Mobile, which is a, you know, AE Mobile, they're like a games publisher uh, that will, um, uh, I don't know the details of that. I'm not going to, I wouldn't presume that it's awesome or not awesome. Uh, next level up actually comes down to downloads and quality. So the way they review uh, whether, you be, whether you are a master is you, you literally you go to the dev center again and you say, hey, I want to be a master because I want. Um, uh, uh, publisher support, which means when you go to submit to the store, you get to email directly and say, what's going on? How come I haven't heard back? We've got to launch tomorrow. Uh, you get that. Uh, you get uh, uh, the ability to be merchandised in the store, which is probably the biggest, uh, biggest thing there. Um, to be a master, it comes down to rating quality. So if you've got something in store, people love it. Downloads matter as well, but it's mainly rating quality and references. So I get an email saying, do you know these guys, for example, right? And we'll put that together and go, yeah, these guys get master. So let's start to really merchandise them and teach them, right? Because one of the things that happens when you get merchandised is you go through an extra level of review where we determine like whether there's going to be any serious bugs, right? There's a, there's, there's a cursory check to make sure that your game doesn't crash, just being a store. Uh, but there's a higher level of review around performance, particularly on online devices uh, for merchandising. But you get publisher support to get this dialogue back and forth from that, right? So that's Dev Center benefits. Most people don't know it exists because it's kind of new, uh, but I actually think it's pretty, uh, uh, pretty awesome. That's where you go to get on the Dev Center if you, if you don't have a Windows. How many of you have a Windows Store developer account? Okay. How many of you publish something to the Windows Store? Cool. Um, the rest of you, you're broken. Um, that's where you go. Yeah, that's where you go to just to sign up for an account and, and figure out how to use it. Um, and the other thing that we've done is, um, which we announced about six months ago, but more people seem to, more people know about this than, than, than not. Um, it's not at $19 a year, it's, it's a lifetime subscription. So even if you sign up for your 19 bucks, or if you signed up for your 99 bucks when we went uh, to market, uh, your subscription is now permanently uh, a lifetime. So again, we know we're third, so we're trying really hard to make sure that it's super, super easy and super cheap to come onto Windows, but your subscription won't cost you any more if you sign up to the store. Uh, the other one that's kind of, um, it's the one we're pimping downstairs, it's the one that's, we've just rebooted this program, it's called the Dev Center Offers. This is for people specifically with Unity. Um, and there's kind of two tiers of this program. Um, so you go to, I forgot, Matt, devcenteroffers.com, yeah. something like that. Um, if you go to us downstairs, you'll get the URL. If you come to me, I've got little cards with the URL. But you basically go on, and, um, and these are things that we're doing to incentivize Unity people to get onto uh, to the Windows Store. Um, so 
you have to have a game, uh, and the game has to be pretty much ready to go. Uh, it doesn't have to be. Um, it, it, it doesn't have to be like in the store. It could still be buggy. It could still have performance issues. But we want to see something and go. Okay, this thing is half decent. Let's invest a bit of time into it. Uh, and what you get if you qualify, and you literally go to a URL and say, "This is my thing." Um, and actually, the easiest way to do it is just to put it in the store as a hidden beta, and then you just point a URL to it, and then we can test it. Um, so what you get if you qualify. Uh, so you sign up, you say, I want, I want some benefits. Uh, you get a Windows Pro license um, to, to work with. Uh, you get 100 bucks in the Unity Asset Store. Uh, and probably the best thing is you get a developer uh, device. So you can opt in for a phone or for a uh, tablet uh, to start testing. Because uh, typically if you're at this stage, you go, I've got something, but I can't really test it because I don't have a low-end tablet or I don't have a phone. Um, this is where you go to get one of those, um, and if you qualify, we'll ship you uh, one. Yeah, it's not the only way to get a device. The other way to get a device is me. Is email me directly and say, "Hey, I have this thing. Do you have a device you can lend me?" I have a pool of um, of low end 520 Lumias and low end ASUS ship boxes. I don't know what they're called. The transformer little crappy ASUSes. Uh, very deliberately crappy ASUSes because they're low end and. Uh, and we want to be the lowest common number. I also have a couple of Lumia uh, 1020s, um, which if you want to test a little bit higher res and, um, and stuff, but it's best to actually test on low end after you go to emulator. Um, and um, priority review for store promotion means we will look at your game, not necessarily give you store feature, yeah? But it means when you say, hey, I want to be in the store, it'll eventually get looked at. But this actually puts it in a queue of people to look at it. So it's kind of cool. But you kind of get that if you just email me anyway. Uh, then there's the second level. So the second level is, um, is a little bit more hardcore. So it's for titles that aren't just in the store that we think are decent. It's titles that are actually performing to some extent. Uh, whether they perform on Windows or perform uh, on iOS and Android, it's not that important. But they're titles that have been proven by the market to go, these are good titles. So if you qualify for that level, and this all happens when you go sign up for benefits. Um, we'll give you um, uh, a million ad impressions again on top of the other million if you sign up for Dev Center. Um, a voucher for the store for 100 bucks instead of 50 bucks. Um, we will, there's a, there's in the gallery, in the Made with Unity gallery on the Unity uh, website, uh, there's a, like a, a Microsoft tab. We'll put you there. Um, and uh, again, you'll get consideration into the uh, into the store um, and uh, the top three candidates each month will receive a unity pro license so if we love you enough this is globally so don't bank on your unity pro license but this is globally um, you'll get a, a unity uh, pro license how do you qualify for these uh, so when we go and look at your criteria and go these guys are good these guys are no good the way you qualify is um, is if you're on another platform and it's got three plus ratings, we go, okay, it's not a totally shit game. Yeah, so at least it gets, it gets looked at. Um, new titles, so if you go in there and you say, this is us on the other, on other platforms, instantly it gets looked at, instantly it'll get thing if it's over three plus. If it's a new title, um, it still can get considered for uh, the benefits, like for the device and stuff, uh, but it's just a little bit harder. Because um, a lot of this is actually for us about, is about um, rewarding is about rewarding good developers and not just titles themselves. Um, so to get the level two stuff, so to get the million ad impression, million dollar ad, million ad impressions, um, it needs to be published, it needs to be in store, it needs to be doing uh, 100K of downloads if it's free to play or 10K if it's a paid title. Um, that's not just for Windows, that's on anything. So if you're on Android and you're doing 100,000 downloads, um, then that's a bar for quality for us and we'll uh, give you those level two benefits. Uh, there's also, a level three that doesn't really exist, but there's a level three, and this is this is the, the like another part of the equation where we go. So we know about ID and Xbox. Do I have to tell you about ID and Xbox? Does anybody not know what ID and Xbox is? Oh, okay. Um, ID and Xbox is your ability to put games on an Xbox console. So if you have an Xbox One and you go to the store and there's games there that are like 99 bucks for Destiny, uh, and then there's games that are like 14 bucks for Guacamelee. That is an idea of Xbox game. So it's kind of like what Xbox Live Arcade used to be, but that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, idea of Xbox is indie games 
We put them in the same store, they look exactly the same, they just happen to be cheaper because their titles aren't as, as big. Um, and it's a program for us to be able to bring developers onto the Xbox and have them sold through the Xbox. The challenge with IDE and Xbox is unlike the Windows Store where it's like go nuts, uh, we curate the Xbox pretty, pretty, pretty rigorously because it's got a reputation for good titles, we don't want just random stuff on, on the Xbox. So you, you go to xbox.com slash ID and you say, hey, I want my game on the Xbox, we'll send you two consoles, two dev consoles, um, and we'll give you a Unity Pro license uh, yeah, and a Unity Export license for the Xbox. Um, we'll do a whole bunch of stuff to help you get to the Xbox, um, but, um, but the catch is we don't just hand them out willy-nilly. It's a really high bar of good titles that we think have a lot of, pro a lot of promise that get you know, dev kits and all that kind of stuff. It's a decent investment from our end, and it's also a store that people just expect to have high quality. There ain't no fart apps on the, on the Xbox store, right? Um, so one of the nice things about being in, with, in Unity is, um, is, um, is we have an allocation in the pool of Xbox people that can go on to uh, be on the Xbox, uh, and we have, a, we have a slice of that that's people specifically on Unity. Because we know Unity is awesome, and we know Unity is a place where devs already built stuff. Um, so if you want to be considered for the ID and Xbox program, in other words, if you want to build and sell for the Xbox, you go to xbox.com slash ID, and you submit. But if you're in this program, and you email me saying we're in this program or a level two, we have slots in that ID and Xbox program that will accelerate your ability to be there, right? Because a lot of people don't get in, right? If people put their hands up saying, I know what ID and Xbox is. I know there's probably like two people in the room who have an ID and Xbox uh, approval, right? And there's only like a handful in, not a handful, a bit more than a handful now in Australia. But if you participate in the, in the Unity offers, you will get priority um, consideration for the Xbox stuff. And Xbox is kind of awesome. That's the URL. Uh, if you come see us downstairs or come see me here, I'll give you a little card thing with all the details of it. But it's kind of awesome if you're a Unity dev. Uh, the other thing people don't seem to know about, which is awesome, is uh, develop, uh, dvlup.com. Um, and it's, again, another one of those programs. You go online, uh, and it's basically XP for, for doing stuff. So experience points for doing stuff, right? So you go to develop, you sign up, you say, I've got this, I've got, and you do a whole bunch of stuff, like make a game that uses live tiles, or uh, make a game that uses the share charm, or learn to do, do an online course, and you get all this XP, and you can trade that XP for headsets and stuff, uh, which is all kind of cool, but actually the best thing you can trade stuff for in, in develop is store feature. Yeah, so you can go in there and say, I've collected all this XP, I want to use it towards uh, featuring in the store. Yeah? The other secret of develop, is if you sign up to develop with the same ID, that, the same Microsoft account live ID that you signed up with the store with, so you sign up with the store with a live ID, you sign up to develop with the same live ID, your games that are in the store start to generate XP. Yeah, so you've got a game starting to get ratings, it's starting to get downloads, you get XP for those ratings and downloads, you can then go buy headsets and stuff with that XP with that, or you can put it towards featuring in the store, which will do what? Get you more downloads, which will do what? Get you more XP, and off you go into, into Happy Town, yeah? So check out, um, check out Develop. Uh, how much time do I have? Maybe I can show you Develop, actually. So Develop looks something like this. Um, so rewards look something like, sorry, challenges. So you can go on there and if you use add duplex, you'll get 250 XP. If you build something using Sync Fusion, then you get 500 XP. If you get four star ratings uh, with 100, uh, 1,000 plus reviews, you'll get 1,000 XP, etc., etc., etc. And then they get really simple. So just you know, tweet your game, you get a couple of XP. Um, but over here on rewards. This is the stuff you can trade your XP for. Um, so tools, uh, there's hardware there, uh, store credit, etc., etc., etc. Xbox um, uh, subscriptions, and somewhere down that list, I won't go down down anywhere. It's uh, it's it's store promotion, store feature. Yeah. So the only catch to be aware of is um, where are we? is that you want to do it with the same live ID that you're in the store with, yeah? Um, MBA, 
uh, if you don't know how to put a, a Unity game into the Windows Store, uh, there's, about, there's a seven hour full day course that we do for free uh, that you can go to and, um, and, and watch. It's actually pretty good, it's pretty well done, it's professionally trained. It's professional, it's professional trainers that go through and, and, and do a whole bunch of stuff there. So I'm surprised the amount of people that don't know that, but it takes you everything from, it's not a learn to use Unity, it's a learn to put stuff in the Windows Store. So how do you do things like, um, so you see Dodo Go Go down there? Or even that, 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 the Facebook there? Um, like live tiles, which, you know what live tiles are, yeah? Anyone not know what live tiles are? Cool, Windows users, except for the Mac guy down there. I see you, Parallels, I see you. Um, so you saw Dodo Go Go there. It's flipping, um, uh, it's flipping images and stuff. That's 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 bringing activity back to your uh, to your title. Um, so how do you do all this kind of stuff? And I won't go into detail as to probably should, but probably won't. Um, into all the unique stuff that Windows does. That's kind of cool. Uh, you want to know how to put all that on top of your Unity title? You go to get some free training there. Uh, plugins. If you're a Unity person, you're probably not rolling everything by hand, uh, which means you probably use a lot of plugins. A year ago, this was almost empty. There was almost no plugins that worked on the Windows Store. Uh, a year later, it's kind of growing and it's kind of awesome. So there's some uh, probably the one of the most popular ones there is uh, is um, um, Prime 31. Uh, Prime 31. If you didn't know, uh, we've done a deal with Prime 31 that gives you uh, a bunch of Windows Store plugins for free. They probably worth about 400 bucks if you use all of them. Uh, so if you go to Prime 41 slash plugins, tap on the Windows Store, or click on the Windows Store, uh, there are a bunch of plugins that will help you do stuff really simply in Windows, such as the live tiles, and such as in the in-app uh, in purchases, right? So if you want to do something like that, and you want a plugin to do that across all devices, so you only have to write it once. The Windows version of that is free. Um, all the Toast stuff, you can, you can read it. Um, and probably the more interesting one, the more expensive one, is there's an Azure plugin. So if you're going to back in, even if you don't end up putting stuff in the Windows Store, uh, if you end up using um, our, uh, our cloud stuff, the Azure plugin simplified being able to put stuff in and out of, uh, in and out of storage on the Azure cloud. Um, so Prime 31, free. If you're not using it, it's worth using. Um, more things that people don't seem to know about. App Campus, they want to give you money. So these guys, um, these, this is basically a, um, it's an accelerator program. Uh, it started off by Nokia, uh, and it's a way we help uh, devs, and in, in some cases funded devs, in other cases mentor devs. Uh, but you go to uh, App Campus, to App Campus of FI, started in uh, Finland because of Nokia. Um, but we've had titles in Australia that have had 50k in funding, 50,000 euros in funding uh, to go and get built. Uh, there's a couple of catches to that. Uh, exclusivity is the biggest catch. It's saying if we're going to give you 50,000 euros, then we need six months of no one else. Um, and a lot of that's negotiable, but it's there. Um, and those guys have, um, oh, gee, it's like a couple of hundred titles now that they've put through that program. Um, but if you want a place where you could potentially get funding uh, for your apps, that's a place to go. Um, and there's been a bunch of Aussies who've gone through it and successfully uh, gotten uh, cash out of it. Um, I wanted to bring a couple of case studies to, uh, uh, forward that people don't always know about. So people are getting downloads, people are getting success in the Windows Store. Uh, the one of the advantages, one of the downsides of being in the Windows Store is we're not as big as other platforms on, on phone. Um, one of the upsides is there's not as many titles on there, so it's not as clouded. Um, and there's people like me who go, I want good shit to put in the store, how do I help make good shit in the store? Which you're not getting with, uh, with Google and especially not with Apple. Um, so, even though the store is smaller, even though the addressable market is potentially smaller, um, there's a huge opportunity to be first, there's a huge opportunity to be early before we have a thousand apps uh, like yours. Uh, Rebellion, the guys that do um, uh, the Judge Dread titles, the guys that do uh, uh, Dance for Hire, um, they, the first list is more like six months, three and a half million downloads. Um, the things that they remark on that they found really uh, cool about the Windows Store that helped them get those downloads, were they put a lot of effort into internationalization. So they went and did um, you know, Turkish, Vietnamese, Thailand, India. Um, and they do free because they're in those markets and they're actually uh, outperforming their other uh, OSs on Windows, yeah? Um, but it's because they work real hard on making sure they're in India, making sure they're in Vietnam. Um, 
Uh, another one worth looking at is these guys in about three months, they've got, um, they've got uh, two, and a half million, uh, two and a half million downloads in three months. Uh, again, they were all about uh, uh, emerging markets. Uh, and I happen to know the, um, uh, my counterpart um, who um, did a lot of work in featuring them. So one of the reasons they've been successful is A, they went to Brazil. There you go. Brazil shows up again. Italy shows up again. They are the countries, guys, without revealing too much data. They are the countries you want to care about in order. Uh, in, in targeting, yeah? So again, internationalization uh, working for them, particularly towards the emerging markets. Um, um, these guys are interesting because th they reckon one of their biggest reasons for success was that they had live tiles. So, live tile on the Windows Store. They do a bunch of telemetry around how, people came, how many people came in and, and revisited the app. And they noticed that when they push new stuff to the live tiles, like new challenges, more people would come back to the game. So unlike, say, iOS, we, in which we have a thing that says come play the game, uh, they were pushing challenges to the live tile, um, which would bring people back to the, back to the game, yeah? So um, that worked for them. Um, uh, Drift Mania, 6 million downloads in the first, uh, I think, three months for those guys. Um, and their biggest reason why they think they've succeeded in Windows was the partnerships that they had within Microsoft. Was people like me who were pretty hungry, who want good titles on, on Windows, uh, and their close relationship with them, and that they may work, and then six million downloads um, later. They weren't getting that kind of love anywhere else, yeah? Um, so this is what I do. Um, in case you wanted to know, in summary, like we have people locally, not just me, um, who do this kind of stuff. A lot of stuff that you saw that I talked about, I get involved in. So I think knowing me is a good thing. Um, that's true. Um, so, I can help you through the Windows process. There's a couple of titles I've got at the moment that are super awesome titles and they get an international feature. Uh, but we have people locally, I just want to remind you of that, there are people like me around. Um, so, summary of the things that you should give a shit about, these are them. Uh, this is all downstairs somewhere that if you've got my email address, this is all stuff I can send you. But there's a lot of stuff in the Windows world that we're doing to make it really easy to go into Windows. And uh, people are using it. This, I mean, we've done more than this, but some of it takes off, some of it doesn't take off. Like, even the office is going nuts. We, we're getting truckloads of developers who want to get on there because they're getting free devices, they're getting features, they're getting a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, kind of a summary of the stuff. Hopefully, some of this has been useful. I think that might be everything. Yeah, that might be everything. Um, hopefully, some of it useful, kind of useful. Stuff you, did we learn anything at all? Put your hand up, please, if you learned something. Okay. You had your hand down. Does this mean it sucked? <laughs> <coughs> we'll be having words. You're the only one, by the way, with a hand down. <laughs> Everyone else was polite. That's all right. <laughs> um, I don't know, that's it. We've got a couple of minutes. Q&A, questions, you all shoot at me. Hello. I've got a few. You've got a few. You're going to have one until there's more hands. Yeah. All right, go. Uh, if it's technical. Add duplex is a little bit technical, but not be final. Add duplex. Well, you've got awesome access, so let's try. Can we, um, can we switch them server side? Can you switch them server side? Why do you want to switch them server side? Well, add duplex. Can you switch them server side? Like, for instance, if you said that if somebody had add duplex and then he was not making any money, yeah. but he was getting lots of things, but then he switched to add center yeah. so that he could make money, yeah. can we do that? Do it every month kind of thing? We can do that on the fly in your app. Yeah. Ah, so we, it's two systems. Yeah. yeah. You basically, call, you call web service on I, yeah. like, uh, how's my, what's add center? Hey, how, how's, what's the, yeah. what are the ads performing like? Yep. Yeah. That sucks. I'm going to just put, show it up. I assume they're the same system, sorry. No, no, sorry. No, Adjuplex is a third party. Yeah. Actually, former Microsoft employee making uh, shitloads of money from actually Adjuplex. No, they're totally separate ad systems. It's the same size ad. Uh, and it's literally you write a couple lines of code, call a service, see how one ad is performing, and you decide which you want to show, yeah? Yep. I'm not that familiar with Windows, so this might be a dumb question. But yeah. uh, does the store have wish lists? Does the store have wish lists? Yeah. So I saw there was a. No, there's no way to, to gauge that uh, interest that not willing to go out here. No. Uh, you can determine how many people have viewed your title. So it's just looking at a page. Yeah. So if you go into the store, you go to the page. You can go, how many people have viewed me? Uh, but there is no wish list. We also don't do. I don't think we're gonna. We don't do gifting. But we're gonna do gifting, and we may do gifting, and I may be just told you're gonna do gifting. But I don't know if we're doing gifting. We're doing gifting, but I'm not sure it's there. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. You don't need trial, yeah, it's good to get trial between, but I've got a primary 
takeaway and this kind of thing. In this, one thing, if you want to give a build to a journalist, you can't really do that at the moment, unless you've got trouble on it, put things in there. Right. Just mess around with change. You can always just say, it's a bit of a pain in the arse for a journal, but you can sideload apps, but it's not a clear link go, it's more of an unlock a phone, transfer it over the phone and sideload. Not awesome, but doable. Uh, but yeah, no, no code, so I didn't pick the one out of it. Yeah. So. Cool. How are you using it to localize an app that's completely different country? Um, how, the short answer is I don't know. So Paul, have you done a few around localization? So in you, so you just got to use display some screens and write the games from it. So instead of displaying the screen directly, you just have a tag and it looks up. And so, you know, so there's a bunch of bugs in that sort of thing. A lot of students still it. And it, there are plenty of online services that do it. In fact, one of the. Um, it's something that I'm looking into providing. Going, hey, here's our title, here's all our, here's all our text, go translate. And it's something that I could offer, but it's not quite there yet. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's so cheap to get it done, especially if it's just all text. It's so cheap to get it done. When you localize, can you localize the title as well? Or do you need to localize the title? Uh, you can localize the title, yeah. So we still a single app, but we can make it. Yeah, if we need to submit it to my right call, I'll make it shut up. Yeah. I've seen the same app submitted to two store to like in uh, Italy oh. and the title was Italian. Okay. And I don't think they submitted it twice. I think they went Okay, submitting to Italy. I'm not sure how, but in the manifest somewhere, submitting to Italy, <coughs> this is the Italian title. Was there another? You get some metadata when you submit it to a specific country, so your app can just automatically set that language. Well, you do it based on the phone. So, like, what language the phone sets it? Yeah. So, it's just Yeah. You just default to that. And if you're like, if your app doesn't support that language, then maybe just play the language like screen. And then when you submit to the store, you say what languages you have available. So it won't show up in, yeah, in languages that you don't support, for example, if there's, if there's still stuff like that. Uh, yeah. um, I found that the Amazon store is probably the best when it comes to revenue per person. Yep. Or, um, you said you got a third, so are you above Amazon? Did you say that you were doing that? Um, <laughs> it's a flippant statement I made about being third. It depends on how you measure. Yeah, because we did the Amazon port, which was real easy, and yeah. we're looking to do the Windows port, we're hoping that might be the goal by Amazon was. A si very similar we are, right? So I've got friends who do the Amazon stuff. Yeah. Um, we are very similar with Amazon. They're going, we've got the fire, which they just wrote down like a billion dollars on or something. Uh, we've got the fire, we want people spend money. The Amazon's got this really awesome thing where people who fires spend money on shit. Like for them, spending 99 cents on a game is nothing compared to seven bucks on a book. Um, so, and actually, Windows doesn't see it as quite in that every user spends money, uh, but Windows users spend money, right? Like it's not not Android users. One of the really one of the reasons Android did so well is their 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 their, uh, their unique selling proposition was the cheapest phone in the world and it was awesome, right? Like you can get a cheap smartphone. The problem with that is the app ecosystem got hurt by it because you know, it, your proposition is basically, you know, ours is like high quality phones and cameras and productivity and business and the core stuff that Microsoft does, right? So our users spend money. iOS is the same, right? You buy an iPhone because you're buying a premium high-end phone, right? Um, so we're in that category, um, which is why we see good return on, uh, on, not every title, but why we see on average good returns per user is because of that. Uh, we're just as hungry as Amazon. To do that, right? So, if you um, uh, do you know the Amazon price? Yeah. Okay. So, Nick, 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 Nick. Yeah. So, um, you came from? Not yet. Yeah. Uh, so, we do the exact same stuff that they do. Um, and it's all about going, if you're lucky and someone from Apple knocks on your door saying this is awesome, 
go nuts. Delete my email address. But if you're not that guy, then you're in the reality of the world, which is, okay, I need vendor love, because that's what it ultimately comes down to. You've got all the biggest titles that have succeeded on any platform. They're not all flukes. They are good relationships with vendors, going, you know, this is an upcoming title. And that's what Nick does, that's what I do. Yeah, look, that's what we're doing in the business, and I'm a business class member from a year ago, so okay. I'm fully aware of it. Cool. Awesome. Um, currently, we're out of time, but no one's out. So, we all look hungry to leave. What's the breakdown between the uh, uh, credit card process versus the capital? Uh, I don't know. Uh, we don't have, I don't know. I've not looked at that kind of data. I don't know if we'll ever share it. Yeah. Uh, I saw Doshimo up on the list there. Your carry billing is using your own carry billing or do you use Doshimo? I don't understand the question. Uh, well, I'm doing carry billing at the moment through the Doshimo um, for the IRL uh, Android. And Windows. No, we do our own. You do your own. We speak okay. directly with Telstra. Yeah, sweet. And done. Yeah. Um, so I go to buy something on my phone. Did you plug into that? No, no, no. You don't, you don't have to think about it. They don't have to do it. No. It's it's when you set up your store account, your Microsoft account, it says, do you want to use carrier billing or do you want to use credit card? When yeah. the first, sorry, the first time you go to make a purchase, you'll be like, oh, this costs money. Do you I'll want to buy a piece then. Say again? No, you can't purchase this through that system. No, no, you know. The first time you make a purchase that requires money, you get asked for either a credit card, yep. or do you want to use your carrier support, supports carrier billing? Do you want to use that? Yep. You as a developer, you don't give a shit how it came through, no. right? So we just give you the option to go really, really easy. I don't want to put a credit card in just to build my Telstra account, uh, or I want to put a credit card in and have that on the file. And that's through the code you guys offer. You don't think about that. You just, you just, you just worry about they did it in that purchase. I'm going to unlock. Oh no, but I'm just talking about the purchasing system that we use to do that. So it's all different. The code that I use for iOS and Android. Yeah. Do you guys supply the code to be able to do that? Yes. In a package. Like yeah. yeah. Remembering that we don't, you don't have to worry about how the money came into the. No, that's of course. You just yeah. worry. So Prime Thirty One is probably one of the most popular plugins yeah. to make it happen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, thanks. Thank you.